Welcome to our review on plant defences. So the first thing we really need to know is that plants don't just have one type of defence mechanism, they've got two types of defence. First one being a physical defence, which are the physical barriers which prevent the microorganisms from entering in the first place. And the second are the chemical defences. Chemical defences are just substances that the plant will secrete in order to kill any microorganisms that have got past those initial physical defences. What we've got here is a cross section through the leaf of a plant. So we've got a few of these key defence mechanisms labelled on here. At the very top, you can see that black line labelled waxy cuticle. That's a key physical defence. So remember the very top above the epidermis, we have the waxy cuticle. The horizontal row of cells there are the epidermal cells. As we come down, the ones that are packed full of chloroplast are the palisade cells. Then as we come down to the ones that are very spaced out with gaps between them, that's our spongy mesophyll layer. You will also find your xylem and your phloem tissue in there. Xylem transports water and minerals, phloem transports the sugars. And then we've got the lower epidermal cells, including the guard cells and the stomata. So hopefully that's a recap of what we've already looked at in our earlier topic on plants. The first defense mechanism we're gonna look at in a bit more detail is this waxy cuticle. Now, when you are actually writing down a physical defence for plants, don't just write cuticle or waxy layer. Make sure that you remember the phrase waxy cuticle. Now, what that actually is, is a waxy substance that's going to cover the epidermal cells of most parts of the plant. The bonus to that, first of all, it prevents water loss, which is very useful for keeping water within our plant. And it prevents the pathogens coming into direct contact with the epidermal cells. So that means the chance of infection is reduced. Another bonus of this waxy cuticle is that because it's hydrophobic, so that's water hating if you remember, that means it prevents water from collecting on the surface of the leaf, which is very important because if you've got water that sits on the surface of a leaf, then fungal spores that have also come into contact with that region could germinate. So the hydrophobic nature means that the water runs off and prevents the fungal spores from germinating. The second physical defense that we need to remember is the cell wall. Now this is a major defense against both fungal and bacterial pathogens because it forms an excellent structural barrier. Now every plant cell has a primary cell wall and that's gonna provide the structural support for the actual plant cell itself. Now that primary cell wall is made mainly of cellulose fibres, which gives it both the strength and the flexibility. What we can also find is that those cellulose fibres are going to be cross-linked with other substances like pectin, and that forms a gel to help cement those neighbouring cells together. In addition to that primary cell wall, many cells also form the secondary cell wall and that one develops inside the primary cell wall. The second type of defence mechanism that our plants have are chemical defences. Now, these are defensive chemicals which are produced inside the plant. So there are a few you really do need to remember, not only the name of, but also what they do. So the first one, citronella and pine resin, those both act as insect repellents. Obviously, if the insects are being repelled from the plant, they won't then cause the damage to allow the pathogens to gain entry. Pyrethins, these are going to be the insecticides, so they're going to kill any insects that come into contact with them. Phenols disrupt the bacterial cell wall and defensins disrupt the cell membrane. So they both act as antibacterial compounds. We also have antifungal compounds, which are the chitinases which break down the chitin, which make up fungal cell walls, and also caffeine, which is toxic to fungi and insects. Last one on there, cyanide, is just generally toxic to pretty much any living thing it comes into contact with. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe some examples of physical plant defenses, and also describe some examples of the chemical plant defenses making sure that you can recall their names and their specific actions.